today. Hope your dinner's not spoiled. Whatever's kept you. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six little rabbits. What have they been spoiling now? One, two, three, four, five, six fat little rabbits. One, a two, a three, Don't be a four. so silly. What do you mean, you silly man? In the sack. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, they must be off the old rabbits. They're very hard. And everyone a different shape. They're not fit to eat. But the skins will do fine to line my old cloak. Line your old cloak? I shall sell them and buy myself baccy. Rabbit tobacco! I shall skin them and cut off their heads. <laughs> What's this? My old blacking brush. The marrows I threw out yesterday. Rotten turnips. You silly man, you made a fool of me and you've done it on purpose. The wee beasties. They've got the better of me. Again! I've got you. Oh, oh. oh my goodness. Oh, oh. oh. One, two, oh my three, little one, are you all right? Oh, no, no. And I tell you, there were six fat rabbits in that sack. You take me for a fool, John McGregor. Am I to believe the theories changed them into marrows? Well, well I, I never you did. Benjamin and Flopsy thought it was time to go home. The youngest Flopsy Bunny was not much hurt and was soon playing with his brothers and sisters again. But none of them met lettuces in Mr. McGregor's garden for a long time afterwards. It has nothing to do with not wearing my hat in the sun, you silly old woman. Never had anything like it in my life. It's still got nothing to do with the garden, I can tell you that. <laughs> Where are you, you wee beasties? I know you're in there. Come out. Come out. Six wee rabbits making a fool of John McGregor. Mrs. Tittlemouse. But the next morning she got up very early and began a spring cleaning, which lasted a fortnight. First she fetched some twigs and made the front door narrower so that Mr. Jackson should not get in again. Then she swept and scrubbed and dusted, and she rubbed up the furniture with beeswax and polished her little tin spoons. When it was all beautifully neat and clean, she gave a party to five other little mice without Mr. Jackson. He smelt the party and came up the bank, but he could not squeeze in at the door. It was such a happy party. Mrs. Tittlemouse had quite forgiven Mr. Jackson. And although she had no food to suit his tastes, he sat outside in the sun all afternoon and they handed him acorn cupfuls of honeydew and he was not at all offended. Tiddly, widdly, widdly. You are very good health, Mrs. Tittlemouse. <laughs> so, Mr. McGregor did not get his tobacco, and Mrs. McGregor did not get her rabbit skins. But next Christmas, Thomasina Tittlemouse got a present of enough rabbit wool to make herself a cloak and a hood and a handsome muff and a pair of warm mittens. <laughs>